Okay, so this is session 3B uh, at GSE UK 2021. Uh, today, um, our friend Yossi will be, uh, yeah, <laughs> will be talking to us about uh, Z system automation for APP developer and operation by young professionals. Okay. Um, at the end of the session, uh, I would uh, be happy for you to show your appreciation on the uh, session content and the time that's been taken by the presenter to actually um, create this presentation and then to, to be here this morning to give it. So um, please uh, donate generously to the charities, the Royal National Lifeboat Institution, RNLI, uh, and the Guide Dogs for the Bind, both very uh, worthy causes. If you follow the link on your receipt, you'll be able to enter your receipt number and uh, then you'll be able to get a raffle entry. So your generosity may well be rewarded. Okay. But uh, now I'll just hand over to Josie to um, tell you everything he knows. <laughs> okay, thank you, Anna, for introducing. Uh, and welcome to everybody for today's session, which I want to talk about disease motivation and, and how it's being, uh, how it can be used by young professionals, especially by those people who call themselves app developers. So uh, I have prepared like a, a slide deck with, with some kind of um, uh, three agenda points. First, I want to talk a little bit about the challenges about managing hybrid cloud and Z-data, uh, especially the parts in a Z-data center and uh, managing, developing it uh, and uh, managing it with Z-system automation. Second agenda point I want to uh, introduce a little bit about the working as application developers creating solutions for Z data centers and how uh, not the, the part of how uh, really developing that and, and uh, stuff uh, programming it, but uh, how to get it into uh, production, how to get it uh, operated 24 by seven, because that's what counts. And last not least, uh, the, uh, the third gender point, I wanna talk about the 32 session uh, to modern tools. What what is um, nowadays possible, or when you have to uh, app uh, solution development, and uh, so don't be afraid about um, using or developing parts running on ZOS. Um, it used to be 30 to 70 sessions only to develop on it, but there are uh, I will show some new ways how to work and interact with it. And uh, here also, I want to make uh, uh, take the chance and uh, show how we in system automation uh, continued to, uh, and contributed to the Zoe uh, framework, which is now uh, developed and, and being available as open source for especially for young developers who more learned and, and who are more familiar to work with Windows, Linux, and Mac and systems and with modern computing languages. And uh, they are not familiar right now with the 3270 devices anymore. So, but uh, I wanna explain how they don't have to be afraid to, to, to uh, develop complete solutions from one, um, yeah, from one way to work of working. And uh, I will show examples. So now let me start with the first point. So uh, first the uh, statement is that business applications are being developed using nowadays different technologies, languages, build tools, et cetera. Languages could be uh, um, yeah, old, let me say languages like uh, we used to have them on, especially on the mainframe like PL1, RexX, COBOL and stuff like that. Uh, but nowadays nobody uh, from the university learns that anymore normally. Uh, they, they are used to use uh, JavaScript, Java, C maybe, uh, but even that is old already. Uh, Python and um, use concepts like uh, uh, web REST calls, APIs and stuff like that. And, uh, but you will learn later from me, that's all available for uh, Z uh, environment as well. And especially uh, Z system automation has done a great deal to, to make life 
uh, for people easier who are used to those tools. Um, so those business applications are used, uh, they are being deployed uh, on different platforms in a hybrid cloud environment. So when you see like hybrid applications, uh, as said, hybrid applications consist of parts running on different operating systems and also being developed for different operating systems. You maybe make use of open source products, you make use of uh, some, some cool database technologies, uh, some uh, visualization dash dashboards, some event measurement uh, uh, utilities and so on and so forth. And those business applications, those hybrid applications are being developed uh, with new uh, languages like with Java, Python, JavaScript, only to name a few. And uh, they make use of concept which are quite uh, uh, common nowadays to um, interact between components on different platforms with REST calls uh, using the HTTP protocol, HTTP, HTTPS protocol and so on. So those are just a few examples of uh, yeah, nowadays app development work. However, application development or these application development require solution uh, for or tools that cover all those different components, different languages, different platforms. And uh, no app developer um, is, is interested to, to learn only for one platform, one uh, set of tools and have for another platform a complete different set of tools. However, those hybrid applications are running on what we call IBM at IBM as an IBM hybrid cloud. What is IBM hybrid cloud all about? I mean, it means like uh, our understanding of uh, hosting your application either in a, in a public cloud uh, or having even a private dedicated cloud in company. So that means like here you have like shared um, work uh, resources, uh, computing resources on which you host it. However, uh, they are behaving like, like uh, on demand, like a normal public cloud, but they are internal for your company only. Yeah, and last but not least, you still have the, uh, the data centers at the bank end. Uh, here, in this case, Z data centers, uh, where your um, legacy applications are running, uh, where your databases are hosted and, and stuff like that. So in all of this has to uh, be managed and uh, new applications have to um, deal with components running on, on different locations. And they not only have to be developed for them, but they also have to be hosted on them and operated by them. So now uh, coming to the operation aspect here with IBM Z system automation. I, was, I shortly want to give an overview of what system automation is, Z system automation. Um, so um, yeah, system automation is just uh, uh, one of many tools of uh, operating, monitoring and managing the run state of uh, business applications, especially here for Z system automation with those pieces running on the mainframe, running on Z systems. Uh, Z system automation itself is a NetView application. NetView is being used as uh, here as the uh, foundation for also monitoring all those uh, software and hardware. And Z system automation is uh, making uh, decisions um, about where and when and how to start applications and systems and what to do when a, one of those uh, pieces fail. For example, maybe they have to be restarted, maybe they have to be moved to another system and so on. So what it is, as I said, software, uh, Z system automation is a software product running on ZOS platforms. And it does automate uh, startup, shutdown, and uh, uh, complex applications. That means like uh, if you have a solution consisting of a database component of some middleware, some, some, uh, um, some, some uh, application server, and so on, all those pieces have to be started in order to give the solution a running and has to be supervised that is kept on started. And when there's something wrong, then you have to react on it. So that's what is uh, done, not uh, by humans, but by system automation. If you tell them what to supervise and what to do um, with uh, different messages, with different situations and so on. That's done on, on the system automation on the Z platform, although it also gives you the possibility uh, to, to reach out to components even running on non-Z platforms. But uh, I want to, this is a special case. I don't want to uh, talk about that. Last but least, what it does, it ensures high availability. Okay, so in 24 by 7 by 365 days a year, 
stuff has to run when it's, when it's in an operation. And uh, at any time you want that your customers can can reach uh, out and then go to your dashboard and, and order your goods uh, uh, do a contract or and complain or whatever. So everything has to run forever. And, uh, and that in case of failure, it has to be restarted very uh, uh, quick and uh, without um, manual intervention. And that's what the system automation is doing. It ensures high availability. And uh, on a very high level, system automation consists of three components about system operations. So that means um, everything what is running as software is being supervised, is being monitored, and it's being reacted on when something goes wrong. It also does it to a certain uh, uh, way with uh, process operations. So. As you know, like uh, the Z systems, here you can do a lot of uh, tweaking and configuration with the uh, CPUs, with memory allocations and st stuff like that. So it's also operating uh, <clears throat> on top of the processors. And last not least, it also, with help of NetView, has a look on the I.O. operations. So especially like with all the channel transactions and the network transactions, and uh, it takes into account what's going on there and, and um, yeah, makes also preventive or uh, reactive measures when something fails. So uh, system automation itself is a kind of middleware and it's not used by end users, but uh, people using system automation working with that are called like system administrators or operators. The administrators, they usually take care for the configuration of system automation. They define the uh, the policies, they define what uh, um, application have to run where, what are the dependencies and stuff like that. And uh, if you want to um, yeah, add a new application, maybe they create a so-called template resource and say, okay, whenever somebody wants an, uh, to add yet another um, container then here is a template for how to automate a container and then somebody can do it by himself by just requesting in a, in a, yeah, in a cloud fashion a new automated container or any other application also so some operators are not doing that much the planning stuff but they are doing the interaction with system automation they are doing it on a uh, yeah they're working on a shift base 24 by 7 also uh, in different shifts, and they uh, uh, yeah work in case system automation itself or any other tool has really problems in human human intervention, uh, then the system operators can um, dive in and, and uh, find the problem and, and solve the problem, but also they have to uh, fulfill like uh, tasks like uh, run rolling out new software versions stuff like that, so um, those people are in the background and they keep the uh, work running uh, the applications running on Z system and making use of NetView and making use of Z system automation and other tools. So usually when they when we talk about uh, the Z platform, that's the the way how it looks for for Z operators could also do 70 panels, uh, which give them the status either like on request the status of on managed applications and systems, or on what you see on the lower right, it's called an SDF status display facility panel, where uh, yeah more or less gives on on on, on this kind of way and um, yeah very fast and, and accurate and. Uh, uh, always uh, in time updated, on time updated, um, overview about the basic applications and stuff like that. So it's uh, customizable as you want. And you see here in a very uh, uh, nice way and an easy overview about what is running and where you might have problems. Okay, so what is system automation again about? So it, it is business application need to uh, always be there. And that's being uh, automated by, uh, by uh, ensured by the system automation. The system automation runs normally in what we call an SA plex. That is an, um, a cluster of systems or Z speech so that cluster of systems also called a sysplex. Uh, that means like uh, here you see a cluster of simply uh, two systems, a sysplex of two systems, sys1, sys2. And uh, both have the same capability. So if one system fails to, to operate some, some, some uh, software, then system automation takes uh, uh, realize that and takes uh, corrective actions by moving it to another system, for example. Uh, so um, 
yeah, and, and those are all the applications normally being hosted on, on uh, ZOS and being managed in, and uh, by system automation once that has been configured in, in a policy by an SA admin. So what is the system automation now uh, has recently been added is uh, called an, an operations REST API. So if you know about it, about APIs, about modern um, yeah, system to system interaction infrastructure, services are talked to each other with using REST APIs, okay? And, and therefore um, we decided also to add those modern REST APIs to the system automation. So, um, Beside of having uh, system automation, having uh, uh, an interface in, like with NetView commands and with a web-based dashboard SMU, as it's available right now, uh, we have now this API. The API is uh, 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 yeah, allows you to exploit all the capabilities of system automation in order to monitor uh, what's going on with with applications that are being, which are being managed, uh, start and stop them, move them, uh, get the overview about systems, get uh, the overview about uh, important components, start and uh, activate another configuration, and all this stuff can now be done with a REST API. So you see uh, what functions are being provided. I already talked about that. And um, what is this useful, this API? It is useful for, as, uh, for tools being developed for SA administrators um, and uh, that want to control the current configuration. They want to see what's going on with the system and, and what is hosted where and stuff like that. Uh, but also what you want to be able with that API, you can develop tools uh, for uh, SA operators and or application developers and uh, to also give the same way to, to see, okay, what is the status of my applications I'm interested in, my application components, I'm able when I want to, um, yeah, bring out a new version of it. I'm able to, to stop and restart it. I'm able to, to create a new um, automated resource uh, out of my application. So when I'm an APP developer and I have a component developer, which is quite cool and I wanna have it running on, on some system, I can go and then first I have to install it, I have to configure it, but third, I have to, to ensure that's also now being automated by system automation. I do that by simply using uh, that API and you later will see uh, some tools using that API um, and, and say, okay, now here is my application, take care of it, make it uh, and automate it. And uh, so without having the need to know how to deal with those NetView interfaces or with an SMU dashboard and stuff like that, uh, but make use of an, uh, yeah, commonly, uh, um, yeah, usual APP, uh, sorry, API, uh, which can be used to, to achieve that. Um, so the system automation operations API, API allows you as I said, to work with resources in the, in the way that you can list them, you can, you can see what is being automated, what is their current status. Uh, you are able to create new resources, that means um, from a template. So you can say, okay, dear system automation here, I have developed a new APP uh, running on the uh, as, uh, Unix system services application, for example, and I want you to take care for it. Um, and uh, you take care for this APP, following um, that uh, template description, which uh, is in your uh, configuration. Uh, and the name of the template is um, my fancy USS application. And now create an, just an automated resource of it and take care for it, sorry. And um, yeah, and system automation takes care. So it's also like uh, comes together with work with templates. So um, when I'm as an MPP developer doesn't know what templates are available, yeah, I can list them and, and uh, with description and say, okay, this is a template describing how to take care for uh, REST servers running on Unix system services being part as of a WebSphere Liberty deployed application or whatever. And those templates are being there. And now an APP developer can say, okay, nah, yeah, I want to use that template and make system automation take care for my application using that template as a raw model. Also, this is quite uh, something uh, uh, normal for working with system automation. 
is uh, the concept of a request driven automation. So instead of like turning on and turning off, uh, I, I uh, formulate it as a request. So uh, I say system automation, I want this to be available. Okay, so this is my request. And uh, it can maybe uh, a, a different person can have a different idea of what should happen right now with application can also make an offline request or whatever. So now it's being ruled who, who is um, internally, who has the power, who decides now the end state. And uh, but uh, what I want to say is like system automation is not working like with a switch base. So the last one who, who turns off the light switch can the last one turns off the light or whatever. No, it's request based. So a request of a person of an operator is always being uh, um, remembered. And when there are multiple requests, then there are different rules uh, to 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 judge them against each other. And uh, system automation will make this the best that uh, the the uh, less harm is being done to the system. So if an application is somehow, or an application is somehow uh, required by some other component, it will not be stopped. So for example, so system automation is a request-based automation instead of a command-based aut uh, uh, automation. And uh, here with an API, which we offered is now, you are able to work with those requests. And last but least, and especially this is uh, required by people who work with the SA Plex uh, and uh, want to see the configuration, want to see all the systems and, and, and demons and services running there. Uh, here it is now possible to work with SA Plex configurable members. Yeah, and last but least, I made a screenshot here of that Swagger UI uh, or the Swagger uh, representation of our REST API. So when you start our REST API server, and it's part of system automation now, and you start it, then it, it will automatically start that uh, Swagger UI here, those Swagger servers, and where you can simply see all the REST calls that you can now do against uh, system automation. Even you can use that uh, Swagger interface here to try those calls by, uh, yeah, like usual, uh, go to, to that endpoint, go to try it out and, and uh, interact directly from that UI with system automation. So uh, as you see, it runs in your web browser. And there is no need for you to understand and to work with uh, 3270 devices anymore. You work here with the system automation with an API as with any other API as you used to uh, have as an APP developer. And uh, uh, yeah like an API for, for uh, maybe your mail service, your, your uh, SMS service, your whatever. So in here you have it now for uh, system automation. And uh, there are a lot of other APIs also available for, uh, for Z-World. Uh, one thing I want to mention also, is there is an op a similar operations API available for NetView itself. So if you want to get more detailed information, very detailed information about your network, your IO, whatever, you can use that API. So working as application developers, creating solution for the data centers, what that does that means. So first I wanna introduce you to, uh, to Eric. Eric is an application developer and he designs, implements and develops new applications uh, that partly run on the IT environment and partly run on, on the US. And uh, uh, yeah, and uh, he, therefore he develops that and, and makes it, uh, deploys it there and makes it uh, uh, yeah running there and hopes that system automation takes care for it. Beck and Mike are different department and uh, they are system programmers, and they ensure availability with help of uh, IBM NetView and IBM Z system automation. So those uh, IBM Z NetView and IBM Z system automation are simply tools taking care for applications running on, on the SA Plex. And uh, as I already explained before, uh, we, there's uh, the aspect of software automation, like with all like application components that need to be supervised and running, but also there's an aspect of hardware automation. So now how do you interact with Z and now how it comes to uh, modern uh, uh, development for young professionals. And I named that session here from 32.7 session to modern tools for developers. So here now let me uh, switch over to the perspective of Eric again. Eric, when he uh, used to have to develop components running on ZOS, 
he in a traditional ZOS environment, he uh, had get used to to develop uh, with help of traditional ZOS tools. So um, there is like uh, the traditional interfaces ISPF base, as you see here, and there's the SCLM, the software code and library management uh, utility provided by IBM since ages uh, to develop um, perfect suited uh, applications for ZOS. However, it is uh, it is very valuable for development with RexX, with Assemba, PL1, uh, and or uh, other uh, languages, COBOL or something like that. And yeah, as, as said, with real tools like SCLAMP, and, and here uh, with those tools, those are still the 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 um, best choice if you want to develop ZOS native applications. Since a couple of years, there is uh, also an, uh, a more modern UI available for developers. That's the IBM developer for IDC, which is based on Eclipse. So uh, here, uh, Eclipse is an IDE, a modern IDE, which works cross-platform. So, um, and uh, you can use modern languages and you can install it on your laptop and, and work with, uh, with a GUI way as you used to have in, in nowadays. And uh, the, especially the IDZ is up, still optimized to work for developer uh, for ZOS. And, and, but they uh, give the chance to use modern languages like Java, C, C++. And, uh, but it is still um, the, the IDZ is more for developers, for apps, for solution best suited for ZOS native applications. Now, when I look at Eric, how, how he comes nowadays from as a uh, uh, student, as a graduate from university, he used to uh, new tools uh, running on Windows, Linux, Mac environments, like the Visual Studio Code IDE uh, as a, one example, maybe there's IntelliJs, maybe something else. And he, uh, everybody knows how to use GitHub and Jenkins and other tools, uh, Spring, Spring Boot and so on. And uh, now he is faced to develop components for ZOS. So um, now we want to, uh, don't want to go to this Eric, to this person say, okay, now go ahead and learn Eclipse or uh, SCLM or uh, ISPF editing. But uh, we want to show him there are new tools available that can uh, integrate, like for example, here you see an example uh, in Visual Studio Code as a plugin. And, and there you can develop uh, Rex code the same way as you develop uh, JavaScript. And uh, as normal application developers, there are still a bunch of uh, many uh, bunch of tools being used for, via command line interface. So, if you're using Linux, if you're using Windows or Mac, then you you're used to a shell. So, uh, and here it comes to the Zoe command line interface. You see a picture here, and you see later by me what how system automation Zoe CLI looks like. And yeah, here now you have a true cross-platform development environment. So you, it runs on Unix, Linux, Windows, Mac, ZOS, wherever. It uses modern languages uh, and, and integrates with modern tools for CI, CD, for con, uh, continuous integration, continuous development tools. It integrates with Git, Jenkins, Maven, Spring Boot, JavaScript, and you name it. So everything here, when you Google for anything of those solutions, you will find solutions using Visual Studio Code and uh, yeah, Git and Jenkins. And uh, now ZOS is also part of this uh, tool suite. So we have really a seamless integrated environment here. So uh, now let me go a little bit about Zoe, what Zoe is. Zoe is an open source framework that allows main to main development. And it allows to interact with ZOS in a more modern way to interact with computers. So in a way like people uh, in 2021 are used to interact with computers having like a dashboard desktops. I mean, uh, uh, every Unix system, Linux system, Windows, Macintosh, any appliance of your uh, router or your te television or whatever has an um, user interface a desktop, which are your, um, used to uh, work with, with a mouse is on click. And yeah, and that's all what Zoe promises now for also interacting with, uh, with the Z environment. And Zoe especially uh, consists of four different, uh, four major uh, uh, um, components. There's the application framework, the mediation layer, a command line interface you will see later and the Zoe Explorer. So as said, 
that's the application framework. Here you see a picture of the Zoe itself. So um, yeah, here you are on the mainframe. Okay, so you're uh, now it's not looking 3270 uh, uh, green screen application like anymore. It looks like more or less uh, like any kind of uh, modern um, desktop environment, uh, which you're used to have on your laptop or your appliance. And inside you're directly uh, talking with um, all the strengths and, and the capabilities that the mainframe in the ZOS application uh, environment delivers to you. But this is opened as a web browser application on your laptop. And, and uh, so you're not uh, dealing with 3270 uh, communication manager devices anymore, stuff like that, or terminals even. So you use what you're used to have on other platforms. One other major uh, component of Zoe is the so-called mediation layer. As I said before, uh, introducing the SA REST API, um, there are many REST APIs available for many different applications on, on Z already. So if you want to interact with them, uh, here the Zoe mediation layer is a kind of broker which lists all those APIs and give you an, a single logon experience and now you can really work with all those different rest apis one time login and then you continue using that token for logging for all those uh, apis and uh, so you can write your own tools your own applications interacting uh, with different needs for different services running on zos all using rest api and only having one mediation layer to talk to and last but least, uh, there is the uh, Zoe command line interface. As I already uh, gave you a short overview about this. Um, so when, when an, especially a PP developer um, works on his laptop, he's used to, to um, um, make use of command line interface uh, of a shell, like on Linux or Windows or something like that, and type in command, whether it be commands to uh, his operating system, to his laptop, or to Git, uh, like a pull request or whatever, or uh, start a Jenkins uh, build job or whatever he does. Uh, he wants, <clears throat> he's using commands, uh, and now he is able to use all similar commands also with interacting with system automation without even having to use any any uh, other UI or whatever. And also last of least, uh, one, one thing is also um, very important is when he, uh, the APP developer especially, wants to interact with uh, Z systems, he has a Zoe plugin for, here you see the Zoe plugin for the Studio Code. So you can simply go on that uh, highlighted Z on the on the lower left and then see like all batch jobs, all uh, what are their current status and issue uh, start them there, issue commands and and uh, yeah uh, work with with uh, jobs uh, job control languages and stuff like that. But in the same way, also using the same editor to develop his source code, to develop uh, to 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 edit Parmlib members, to edit configuration for his app. Uh, maybe there is an there is a YAML file in somewhere in etc slash my app slash config and then there's a YAML file. So he can simply use with one IDE there to talk with everything, to talk with Z based services, but also to to um, yeah uh, browse and work with different um, uh, uh, data sets and, and and files on on the ZOS system. Now let me go back to the Zoe CLI and give you a short overview of what that means. So if you want to use your command, uh, command line interface to interact with uh, Zoe, with uh, Zoe uh, um, enabled applications and then middleware on ZOS, then you need something uh, which is called the Zoe CLI. Zoe CLI is free, it's open source, it's uh, being installed with NPM and it uses Node.js, which is nowadays available on, on uh, it's available already uh, uh, when you install it from Linux and the Macintosh systems, but also uh, it is available for Windows and quite easy to install. So you install Node.js on your system, you install NPM, the Node's Bracket Manager, and then you can install the Zoe CLI, which all, everything comes for free. And then you have uh, yeah, the Zoe CLI on your system. So you, in, in this way, you need to prepare every laptop what you want to use the CLI from. 
Zoic CLI already comes with a set of base functionality, so you can um, yeah uh, see data sets on the system and then you can issue jobs and uh, work stuff like that. So it's interacting with USMF in this way, but uh, it really uh, becomes powerful when you think about all the plugins you can install afterwards into that CLI plug uh, into that Zoe CLI. And one of those plugins is uh, the uh, uh, SA CLI plugin for Zoe, as you see here. Uh, but there are also other plugins like for NetView, for Kicks, for DB2, for IMS, for WebSphere, and so on and so forth. Uh, what you need, what you have on your mainframe here, you can now uh, choose from plugins and just simply, simply add them um, to the Zoe CLI. All plugins uh, work uh, similar. They are uh, First of all, the Zoe CLI does the input parsing of, of commands and uh, knows and uh, chooses a plugin uh, which is now uh, handles those commands. And this plugin itself uses the REST API to talk uh, with the backend. So, what we see here in this picture is the SA Zoe CLI plugin talks with SA with the REST API I was talking about uh, earlier. Here's a picture again about how easy it is to install the SA plugin for Zoe CLI and I said it is for free. So, and then if you go to npmgs.org uh, or npmgs.com, sorry, uh, you and, and search for uh, uh, at IBM, you will find at IBM system automation for Zoe CLI and you will see a description there about what it is and, and how to download it and uh, also how to install it. <clears throat> So you could easily install it with using the notes packet manager by using an npm command, but also, and, and I would advise uh, using this as, as described here with option A, uh, you install it by, by the Zoe plugin install command, which is install, uh, which is a built-in command within Zoe, within Zoe CI. So you simply say Zoe plugins install and then add IBM the name of that. And uh, uh, under the shelf, this command will then go to NPM, download this plugin, and, and uh, even update this plugin from there when a newer version is available, and uh, simply installs it. And uh, it really, it should not take longer than one minute to install it. I mean, if it really takes much longer, then there is something awfully going wrong. And uh, maybe you have, don't have a connection, you don't have a right to go to npmgs.com, Maybe your company has an own uh, NPM servers, and uh, then it has to be primed with, with this package here as well. But in, in usually, you simply type in Zoe plugins install, and after one minute, you have installed your plugin. The only thing what you have to do there is then to connect it to your system automation environment, to continue, uh, connect to your um, server, to your host, uh, by, by specifying IP and port name, for example. And then you are done already, and that works. So what what means what works? So here you get an overview about what you can do. So uh, all system automation commands in Zoe start with Zoe and the name of the plugin and an abbreviation of it SA. So Zoe SA always starts uh, with commands targeting to uh, system automation. And then there are verbs like activate, create, delete, disable, enable list, and so on. And uh, yeah. Just to explain, list is gives all, always an overview, and and list has an and also has an, an alias, as you see on the right, like ls, like on on Linux you use to, to type in ls <coughs> to list the content of a directory. So here now to list the all uh, resources of system automation, you type in Zoe as a ls, and then you see uh, you get a list. Um, a view instead of uh, a list, list gives you like many objects a view always gives you one object and uh, which must be identified either by uh, by an id or by a com combination of, of name and uh, other attributes which make it unique uh, especially for eric for our app developer there is this concept of dynamic resources which can be created deleted from from a so-called template I mean, that's a concept which has been uh, uh, introduced a while ago by system automation, having dynamic resources. So in a template, it is more like uh, uh, yeah, a recipe of, um, yeah, of something being automated by system automation. 
Um, and as a admin can define those recipes as template and an app developer like eric can now say okay i have here a new nice uh, web sphere application uh, and i want that system automation takes care for it so then you can create a so what we call dynamic resource from a template and then system automation takes care for it yeah, last of least also uh, uh, operators, Eric's or Zex or Mitos can start to stop resources via request. And uh, I, I, I talked about that as I was introducing API. Here now with the OSA CLI interface, you can say simply stop resource to, uh, to issue a stop request. Yeah, and the similar is the same as um, uh, uh, listing resources, templates and view them. Uh, requests can also be listed, reviewed, and also deleted. If deleted. Comes to the second point you have to define when you say a Zoe as a command, like you always say Zoe as a verb object. So the verb only says what to do, and the object uh, uh, tells uh, to, to, to what object to work on. So you can say uh, list members, list resources, list requests, list templates but uh, also view a member, view a resource, view a request and so on. But you can also list uh, uh, the connections, the uh, uh, create, um, uh, create resources, start resource and stuff like that. So um, resource as that uh, is everything what's being automated by system automation. So those are resources are like the virtual construct of, of an entity that represents a running application. And templates are uh, yeah, recipes about how those resources can be created from, from that template. So in a template normally says, okay, system automation, an application of this kind, you always use following monitor command, you always use following stop command, start command, and stuff like that. And, and, and this is maybe then, an, or this should be enough uh, to, to, uh, to understand how an application is being handled. Yeah, request can be used to start stop resources and members, uh, especially for Zach for OSA admin is are very important to, to have a look about members to see what system automation, what is the state of system automation and uh, what is running, what daemon processes are running where and um, what configuration is loaded there and stuff like that. But it's not so interesting for, uh, for an APP developer like Eric. So here now you see like those commands for especially for Zach and Michael, like uh, which are admins. So if you see like Zoe is a list where you can say listing members, resource request templates. So it's always Zoe as a list resources. You get now a list of all resources together with their current status, if they are running or not, if they are, uh, so you see a uh, so-called compound desired observed state, and this is quite similar, uh, quite common to, to system automation. So the observed state is what is right now being observed. Is it running or not? Uh, the desired state is, should it be running or should it be right now offline? Uh, and the compound is a more or less a combination of both and, and uh, some, some more information like, okay, it is running, but it's not running good or something like that. So this is the compound state. Yeah, so this is about the resources. Same as, uh, especially for Zach and Mike, it's interesting to, to see like on all systems, uh, what are uh, the role of the agents and the automation managers running there and uh, where, uh, for what are they configured and, uh, uh, what is their current status and stuff like that. So this is, uh, especially this is uh, interesting for the SA admin. Also uh, the SA admin and the operators, they wanna see how many people have uh, uh, issued start or stop or suspend request on different resources. And uh, here they, they can, can see it here and, and uh, maybe they can then uh, also talk to that person, hey, why have you stopped that resource uh, I needed there and stuff like that. So this is also, again, interesting, especially for those SA admins. Okay, there's one special thing is uh, I talked about uh, when you wanna view something, Is not in the NPM. Okay, Westy, thanks for 
saying that. So have you tried to install the SA plugin with the Zoe command or have you tried to install it with the NPM command? And then it says like, it is not the, okay, I, right after this meeting, I will look of that. This should not be there. Uh, thanks for pointing that out. I will make it note and we'll try that. So um, yeah, I, I think it should, should work later this day again. I'm sorry for that. I don't know why that happened. Okay, let me, but let me first continue with, with uh, what the, um, what I've brought now here. So uh, when you want to see um, the result, the the, uh, um, um, the details of one resource, for example, then it has to be uh, authenticated uniquely. You can do it uh, with with um, by using that ID. And this is like double click and copy paste and something like that. You don't don't remember it. Uh, but however, you can also use the same commands by, by identifying it via name, system, and type, and stuff like that. So um, you don't have to work with IDs if you don't need to, um, but it's possible. So uh, also like you can uh, activate a policy. So the policy is the configuration that the administrators write for system automation, and you can uh, list the policies and you can, uh, yeah, uh, getting the uh, here, getting the overview about what is being currently running, and, and there is also the ZOESA activate policy command to activate it. And also now, if you want the details of one command of one object, use use the view command. I said you use it either via the advanced ID command, or you can use the um, uh, command uh, with names, uh, name type system, stuff like that. It should same uh, should be the same. Now I want to talk a little bit more about what's interesting for Eric, and I already explained that scenario uh, uh, before. So when Eric uh, has created a new app and has been uh, installed it on ZOS and, and configured it, maybe. Uh, correctly, then now he uh, wants to create a resource out of it in order that system automation can take for it, uh, can take care for it. So he creates that resource by the template ID or name. Uh, he gives that uh, resource a name and uh, says on which system he wants to host it. And system automation then takes care for it. And also uh, Eric can after that say Zoe as a start resource, stop resource, and, and in this way start and stop it. Also, what is uh, here very uh, important for, for Eric to, uh, to uh, know, there is, beside of starting and stopping, there is a suspend resume request. The suspend means system automation still continue monitoring that resource, but don't interact anymore when, when the status is uh, against the current desired status. So system automation will not interact with the automatic start. Uh, but uh, only continuous monitored so that you can see that something is offline. Uh, so um, especially those suspend and resume requests are available to, uh, are important to know by Eric since when creating uh, a resource by template, then he will, um, then he will uh, uh, create that resource in a resume state. So uh, in a suspended state, I'm sorry. So he first has to say resume to really now let uh, system automation take over and start it. Yeah, but again, after Eric has added uh, his application, a system automation resource, he can now interact with that application by say Zoe as a start resource or stop it. And uh, uh, instead of remembering, now the uh, type it, uh, the command which he normally would have to start uh, uh, to use, um, or let me phrase it a little bit different. He should not use the command anymore because now it's being automated by system automation. If he uses command and stops something, then system automation will find all the resources offline and will restart it again. So once Eric has added an application as resource to system automation from a template, then uh, after that, he should only use the start stop commands. Okay, no view again, like development to operation done the usual way is like uh, 
Uh, again, with the main, uh, reminder uh, that we have added the resource template concept already with system automation uh, a time a while ago. And those resource templates are pre-approved by SA admins uh, uh, and uh, are kind of recipes how to take care for resources uh, for applications. So normally then uh, uh, Eric is developing an application. He transfers an application now after it has been developed uh, to the, the host and, and installs it there, configures it there. And uh, after everything is done, now it's ready to run. Um, so ready to run means he needs to talk with operations and the MPP developer now uh, does a change request, a telephone call, or he uses a chat tool, or whatever is, is convenient and normal in his company to talk with SA admins and SA operators. Uh, normally those people know uh, uh, how to use the corresponding NetView command, ING DIN, to, to start this, um, to make an APL out of this resource. Um, so this is the usual way. Now with Zoe, with a DevOps scenario, it is possible that uh, uh, the development and, and transfer configuration is still the same. However, it can be done all with uh, with Zoe extension of the Visual Studio Code, for example. So the especially the development all can be done in Visual Studio Code, different languages. Uh, the transfer, uh, it is possible to transfer files between systems uh, from the Visual Studio Code and configure it also by opening uh, configuration files. <clears throat> and now everybody uh, of the uh, DevOps teams now uh, has the same right to Zoe to use the Zoe as AC uh, uh, plugin to issue uh, commands to uh, system automation now to take care for that APL uh, for that application as APL, APL resource. Um, there is no need to know anymore those uh, typical ING, uh, ING commands, NetView commands to interact with, with system automation. So everybody of a DevOps team can now interact with, with Z, can interact with SA on running on Z to make take care of more resources running on those systems. Okay, I think this was already my, uh, that was my last slide. And uh, so Wesley is, uh, uh, so is, is this uh, Steve now, uh, who, who's Wesley? Steve Westwood? <laughs> yeah, okay, Steve, so I, I will, I will uh, uh, directly after this session, I will have to look why this is not working. Uh, so uh, the installation and um, also, uh, I think you know my, my email address and, and uh, I, I, I will give you also a ping when, when something, what's going on there. So I uh, really, I, I apologize for this experience and um, yeah. Okay, so is there a question right now? If not, then okay. I uh, give it back to Anna. Okay, so um, we don't seem to have any questions in here, but uh, great that uh, you can get together with Westy and, and uh, sort this out, I'm sure. Um, for everyone, if you can make sure you fill in your session feedback, um, you can uh, do that online uh, at the address on the page. Uh, this is session three, B, E, um, and please note the question about length of the session. Uh, the answer is five, not nine. Okay, please read the question carefully. Um, and again, just to show your appreciation to, uh, to all the speakers at the GSE this year, uh, dig deep, put your hands in your pockets and uh, donate. I'll leave the appreciation. I'm very old school. <laughs> I still use ISPF. <laughs> so, um, oh. we, also, <laughs> we have also a, um, a, a little bit of a drive to uh, increase the membership for GSE UK. Um, 
you may already work for a customer that is a member of the GSD, uh, but if not, um, you can uh, see from the slide the benefits of actually being a GSC member for a company. But if, uh, if the company doesn't want to be a GSC member, then there is also individual membership available. So you can just yourself become a member of the GSC. Um, hopefully we will be face to face. So uh, uh, in coming years and uh, you'll get your five free places to the, um, to the conference as a company membership. Okay. Um, okay. I think that uh, that does it for now, unless anybody has anything else, which I don't see anything. So uh, I will end the session. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.